Morning, guys. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, yes. So, okay. Let's share my screen. Student nine students have. Oh, thank you. So, before the lecture, I want to explain a little bit uh, clarifications about our. Uh, working process with you. So what we have in our channel? So we will have one channel for all of our students for this course. It means uh, for the all your all your group mates will be in one channel <coughs> and we'll divide it uh, by lectures and by practices using the new created so uh, new created channels like this. So we have here two channels for lectures and other channels will be the for practice lessons. And during the practice lessons today, I think we'll the share link with you, uh, share link with you that uh, that will explain you your assistant for this subject. It means you can ask the all interested questions and uh, all uh, questions regarding to the lab works or projects you can ask uh, to your from your question from your assistant and please try to find your assistant um, as fast as possible because all your questions will be discussed with uh, with someone here i have the separation by the practices and uh, we have uh, i think the five or six groups in practice and all groups will be divided by assistants. So that's why uh, during the practice lessons, uh, what you have to do first is just to find and identify your uh, your assistant, so your teacher during the practice lesson. So um, what else? As you can see here, here I have the GitHub link. So it means you have to pass your GitHub account to your teacher because it's uh, critical for defending defense of the lab works because of the lab works will be um, of the lab works will be defended to the teacher. So about the deadlines of the lab work starting from the second one. So the second lab work uh, I will announce today uh, after the lectures. So as you can see here we have different timetable for different groups. So for instance, uh, it's a Saturday, 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 but here we have Wednesday uh, lab works and also will be on Thursday and on Friday. That's why uh, for all of our groups, for all of our students, deadlines for each lab work every week will be until the Wednesday. It means uh, Tuesday, uh, 23 uh, or uh, 00 at uh, midnight. It will be the da just a deadline for the lab works. So until the Wednesday, you have to upload your lab works to the GitHub and you can read, you can learn about uh, new things until the Saturday, until your practice lessons. If you have my timetable, if you have the lab works on Saturday, you have uh, extra three days to learn about the new things uh, about our lectures, but you have to defense. Uh, so you have to upload your lab works until the Wednesday. OK. I think it will be. Announced uh, again in the lab works. So today we have to continue. Today we have to continue our lectures. Can I ask uh, you something? Please. Uh, I joined. I have joined now. And uh, how can I get the link uh, to the Excel file? It's just it was discussed uh, yesterday. Other students also uh, doesn't have this link. So in the during during the practice lessons, your teachers, your assistants will be uh, will use uh, will send you to fill your GitHub accounts and to identify your teachers. Starting from today's uh, practice lessons. OK. Yes, OK, thank you. 
OK. So today we have to continue learning uh, basics of the web development. So lecture number two. So what we want to learn today is so OK, let's speed here. So I already started this. OK, started this recording. So here we have web development roadmap link, GitHub link. If you click this button, click this link, this will be link it to the some repo. Here we have the little bit uh, explanation of the web development roadmap for new year. It means support 2021. If you have, uh, you can, and you have to uh, see the videos also. And let's discuss. So introduction, it means web development and for the new year 2021, what you have to do and which ways, which directions we have in development in the area of the web development. So I have very common, <coughs> very common separations like a front end developer, back end developer, and we have the DevOps. Front end, it means just the uh, development of the front side. It means HTML, JavaScript, and all the frameworks and all the tools which will be help, uh, which will be used in the, this uh, direction. About the back end, we also know. <coughs> sorry. About the back end, we also know. Uh, it means uh, the logic of the system. So here we have also other databases and so on, all, all configurations and different frameworks for developing the back end side. And we have third direction, which is a DevOps. Uh, DevOps direction will be care about uh, your servers, configuration of your servers, operating systems, and all the other configurations, which will be for uh, updating your applications. For instance, CI, CD, it's a conti continuous integration and so on. When you have a new version of your program, you have to just without any pain, you have to update your program in production mode and so on. About these tasks will be discussed in DevOps direction. And if you if it's interesting for you, you can choose after the uh, several subjects from the university, you, you can choose the direction and to, to learn about this uh, a little bit more. So we'll start from the front side. Front end development. What's the responsibilities for that uh, uh, position? Let's say position or direction. So front end development. You can read about these all subtitles uh, uh, at your home and try to understand the meaning of that uh, meaning of that uh, rectangles. So it means internet, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and version control system. So the basics of the GitHub. So this is all the knowledge at the end. All the front end developers have to know. So it's a GitHub. Uh, so the web, web security knowledge about uh, SEO optimization. Uh, so working the HTTP requests and so on, learning the DOM manipulation. So DOM manipulation, it's all the things we, we can see on the web page and about the JavaScript and uh, ECMAScript also will be in the front end development. So the package managers like uh, NPM node package manager, Yarn, which is uh, uh, also the optimized version of the NPM and you can learn about it, about the course, HTTPS requests and so on, uh, different type of uh, rules, different type of uh, accessible learns for instance bam it's a rule for the css learning and all other uh, useful tools for creating and improving the development step of the front end which is also css so the task managers building learning the frameworks for here we have the formatters some so here we have the framework as you can see react angular view and all other uh, inside uh, inside libraries or modules for that frameworks and after that not after that it's just might be concurrently also so the modern using of the style sheets so gsx and so on web components 
and also we have beside uh, just for, uh, JavaScript frameworks, we have also CSS frameworks, as you can see here, uh, Cypress and so on. So the material UI for the CSS frameworks, the bootstrap and so on, you, some of them you already heard about them and uh, it might be mm, not, it might be familiar for you if you have already practiced and already uh, working with these uh, frameworks or with these languages. So processing web apps, storage, web socket and so on, TypeScripts, server side rendering also will be the, on the front end side because Using these libraries, you can implement such like a technology like called a server side rendering. About these uh, technologies, about this, all the rectangle uh, titles. If you have any other questions, uh, you can uh, take a note and answer. Uh, you can uh, get the answer until the after the lecture. So the GraphQL, which is uh, also new uh, new term, because uh, about this. Uh, uh, Five years ago, we don't uh, we will don't have any knowledge about this GraphQL. About the mobile development, also using the React Native, for instance, you can develop the mobile development. So the desktop applications also will be the uh, on side uh, on the front end side. So front end, it not just a web page. It might be also as you can see mobile applications or desktop applications. It means the front, the view interface side of all applications, all platforms, uh, any engines will be the, on the will be the covered on the front end development. So we'll move to the back end roadmap. So the back end roadmap it's also internet the basics from front end knowledge because all the back end developers you have to know the basic knowledge. How can we pass uh, so needed data? Uh, so uh, for it should be comfortable for front end developers also. That's why uh, all back end developers also should know the minimum uh, knowledge about the key points of the front end development. So after that, it's a very critical point here is operating system, general knowledge, operating system and general knowledge. You have to work uh, as you have uh, here back end developers. Back end developers will care about the working process of the whole system, almost whole system. That's why they have to know about the operating system, uh, operating system terminal commands and uh, managing the services and process uh, management and so on, and using the concurrency threads, input, output management and so on. Learning the languages. It's just examples here, but this list can be extended uh, very long. So Java and so on, the Python, Ruby, uh, JavaScript also will be as a backend uh, frame, uh, backend language. And what else? Here we have the databases, the Postgre, as you can see here, the Oracle and so on. So yeah, yeah, we have the relational database and we have no SQL database like uh, uh, MongoDB and so on, as you can see here, Cassandra, MongoDB, Firebase. Uh, about the databases, so we have here, uh, what else? The Firebase database normalization, which you already know from the previous subjects. So about the cookie and all the tokens, uh, all the type of the tokens, which will be also used in the, the backend development and with the front end also. About the APIs, as you uh, as we said before, so we have here different type of the formats, so the JSON API or SOAP API and so on, RPC APIs. It's so about the caching here, testing CITZ, I said before, so it's a continuous integration and continuous development. So design development principles, so monolithic applications, it's just a design architectural design for creating your application. Uh, it's a brokers, a message brokers, which will connect two different applications with each other using the message brokers like uh, RabbitMQ or Kafka and so on. About the dockerizing, as we said before from the previous lecture, uh, to clone your application, to manipulate the in instances of your application, you can use uh, containering like a dockers, or you 
or isolating your project from other whole of other operating systems. So here I have the web servers, as we discussed it, uh, from previous lecture, we have Nginx, Apache, and so other options. And that's it for the for the roadmap for the backends. And if it's interesting for you, you can also uh, think about the DevOps uh, development. You also have to know about these uh, languages because DevOps also will care about the working process and working uh, process of whole system. So understanding different OS concepts in if in the backend roadmap, if it's just a general knowledge of our operating systems, but in the DevOps development, you have to know more deeply about operating systems and different of different types of operating systems. For instance, for Windows, for uh, Linux, for other operating types of operating systems, you have to know how can we configure and how can we run uh, any program in that in that operating systems because the main uh, main task for the DevOps developer is just to configure and run the needed program in that operating system. And as you can see here, we have the different types of Debian, Libra, Ubuntu, CentOS, and, uh, Red Hat, and so on, Linux, Windows, different types of operating systems, and all the technologies, all the configurations that will be inside of that uh, machines. So the configuring for the HTTPS, so here I have the different web servers, Nginx, IES for the Microsoft and so on. Here I have the dockers also. So GitHub CI, which will help you to configure so CI CD tools. So Jenkins also will be the helpful for helpful tool, Bamboo and so on. All these uh, technologies, all these uh, new trends will be used for the DevOps development in the production mode. Here we have the Kubernetes, as you can see here, Kubernetes will, uh, as an orchestrator for the dockers and so on. So what else here? So the providers, the server providers, here you can uh, get your machines, virtual machines, and configure that in the needed uh, configuration. So as we said before, we have also local providers like PSKZ or HosterKZ, like also our Amazon Awesome servers, uh, web servers, and so on. And that's it. As you can see here, we have the keep learning. All the sections, all the sections will be as a keep learning because it's just an example of the whole um, basic uh, understanding for the different free, free the different directions for the development. And as you can see here, we have the keep learning. Keep learning means every day and every second we have the new things and the new technologies to use in that uh, directions. So, okay. And we have to continue today learning uh, the basic knowledge about the HTML and CSS. So here we have the link also, if you open it, uh, it's just a simple link and you can go to the this link and learn about so you can uh, see and click these buttons so click these links to go to the this site as you can see here it says brawl the first website the world wide web what does it mean world wide web it's a just a first one of the first uh, web pages which was created in 1989 by Tim Berners-Lee. It's the just first website which was uh, developed and uh, shared it with the world wide. And this link, and this link says homepage of the first website. Can you imagine that the first website was like interface of the first website will be just uh, consist of the four links and that's it. So, okay, what we have here? We said about the HTML. HTML abbreviature stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So, comparing with the other languages that you already know, for instance, C++ or Python, 
uh, the difference between the that languages and this HTML is just a markup language. It means you have to just a mark uh, to to set some interfaces. And here I have the link also link also for the HTML book uh, side, and you can read about the all uh, text, all the elements of the HTML and to read about them a little bit about, uh, at your home. So today we want to work with that uh, elements of the HTML and try to show you some examples also. So let's open some examples here. So department. So we don't have any sub uh, any any folder here, isn't it? So let's create web development twenty one spring web development twenty one and let's create week number two and we'll open the editor so about the workspace uh, when you are working with the in, in your computer so let's show i think i already uploaded the working place isn't it or not Big number one so okay i will uh Post on the week number two the environment that you have to install uh, install on your computer. For the first stages, it's all it's uh, just enough to install the Visual Studio Code. Or if you have if you have already installed the WebStorm, WebStorm also will be the good choice for working with the um, uh, for the web development. So here we have. OK, let's create and open it in WebStorm. We have two options. The second one, which is the WebStorm, might be a little bit heavier for some of uh, some. Uh, uh, for some computers because it requires more resources for running and that's why at the first stage you can work with the visual studio code but uh, starting from the when we will start learning about uh, angular or Vue.js, it will be more comfortable working uh, working with the web store okay that's why today um, as we have only second lecture. So let's start with the so group number one. Let's start with the Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code you can uh, just download and install in your, in your computer. So here I have the group number one and that's it, okay. Okay. HTML, what is HTML? HTML, as we said before, it's a hypertext, uh, hypertext mark markup language. Uh, what does it mean markup? Markup means you can create your uh, just uh, interface using some elements, some elements which are already uh, exist in that language. For instance, in C++, we have such like libraries, just uh, I, uh, input, output stream, IO stream, and so on, for instance, map. It's just uh, completed libraries which was already created uh, from the developers. Like so, in the markup language, we have the different type of uh, elements. So different types of elements here. Uh, for instance, uh, attributes you can use in your uh, web page. So they are the they will uh, divided to different. Uh, groups for instance headings paragraphs links images uh, buttons list and uh, this list uh, list will be also uh, keep uh, adding 
So also this link also will be the same thing here. For instance, uh, it will be just sorted by the alphabet order. So all the links which will start from the end will be over here. So as you can see here, here we have the some elements, uh, just the name of the elements and some of with market HTML5. About the HTML5 and the CSS3, we'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, but in the under under the, this link, you can also see the man uh, also to see the difference between these different type of elements. So let's create inside of our G1. Let's create file. So extension for the web page development. So the web development extension of the files in which you have, you want to write HTML code. So HTML elements extension should be dot HTML. So what is it? We created an empty file without any data and you know, without any elements. So let's show you here. If you uh, click to this uh, sidebar element, here we have the search bar and all uh, installed and all the new recommended packages to your Visual Studio code. One of the uh, useful libraries will be live server. So before the showing live server, let's create our HTML elements. So HTML, it's a just a root element for the whole of our HTML elements, for HTML page. For instance, if you open any page, for instance, even, even this page, and see the page source. And as you can see here, document type, which will be just uh, and just uh, announcing that in this file we'll write in the HTML language. It's just a decoration of the current file. And as you can see here, here I have the root element, which is HTML. So here I have HTML. Let's divide it to different uh, sections. So we have head, head section here, and here we have the body. So this structure will be just an uh, empty, empty framework. So empty framework for any HTML pages. So we have the HTML tag, which is the root one, and inside of the HTML we have the head, <coughs> head section, in which we will uh, import the need, needed uh, libraries or needed resources, and we have the body. Body is just the content and what we see inside of our web page, and all other extra attributes and all other extra things will be on the inside or outside of these uh, two sections. So it might be outside of the body if it's necessary, but uh, it will be recommended to use it, uh, to write inside of the body. And as you can see here, we have head and inside of the head, you have to import all needed uh, files. For instance, here we have the XML file, CSS file and so on, all the all other uh, JavaScript files, all the importing points or importing links will be inside of the head. It's a just a header of our file. It's a just a including our file. And after that, we'll start body. Inside of the body, we'll just mark up our uh, all our sections. It might be header. If it's a just header one, it's a just this section. So let's inspect it. So here I have the header. So here we have the header one, here we have the side sidebar, sidebar, and here we have the all content. Like this, it will be just more carpet. So let's uh, turn off the mobile mode. Like so, it will be inside of the body. It will be just uh, more capped to, it's just uh, all the links to all other elements and it will be just divided by different blocks and different elements. About these elements, we'll discuss this a little bit later, For but now we have to understand that HTML is just a root element, head and body, it's just the contents of the file. So open, 
Got live server while well, already installed it. Mm, copy paths. Okay. So I just copied the link to this file until the this file. It means uh, starting from the root users and so on until the this file. If you just put this file inside of your uh, browser, it will try to add extension file and this file will be rendered on your browser. As you can see, we don't have any data here. If you open the page source, it's just empty uh, HTML text because we don't have any uh, news here. So first thing. So H1 is just uh, one of the elements, one of the element HTML elements from the section heading. What does it mean heading? It's just the titles. Why we are writing inside of the body? Because body will just store all the information about our web page. So as you can see here, here we have just intentions like this inside of uh, body section to show that the H1 will be inside of the body section. But this syntax is also will be correct, but not readable as you can see here, because we cannot identify that H1 uh, located inside of the body immediately if you have the so many elements, so many texts. That's why we have to just uh, prepare and uh, write inside of the body just with the alignments and paddings here. And after saving, if you refresh your page, here we have the first result of our web page. So if you refresh the source button, source file, here we have the, our HTML element. What's going here? What's going here? So this file was the, described inside of our HTML file. And when browser sees any HTML file, and depending on your HTML elements, it will be just rendered on your web page. As you can see here, we have the different uh, different uh, buttons, different icons, different colors, as you can see here. And uh, this was rendered by the browser. And all needed uh, styles, all needed elements was described inside of the HTML file inside of the HTML file. So here we have a different type of headings. Starting from one until I think five or six. They will just uh, they will just uh, different with the sizes, sizes of the heading, sizes and the paddings of the heading. And as you can see here, H1 is uh, one of the most uh, sizable of headings. And all of these headings also will be under the this link. If it's a uh, heading. So here we have the from one until the six. Six, it's just the uh, smallest one, smallest heading. And the paragraphs. Paragraphs, it's just a P attribute. Uh, <coughs> Syntax is for any element inside of the HTML. It should be uh, covered with the arrows, opening and closing arrows. It's the opening of our element. And to close our element, we have to put such like a syntax. So same thing, but here we have the slash also, slash, slash uh, element, which says, this element, HTML element, ended here. And uh, if you have such like a code here, H1 and H2, it would be just a mistake for, for describing your elements. That's why so both of them should be the same name and the uh, end one should be uh, used with the slash, which says ending part of our element. And same thing for other elements. But we have different uh, exceptions here. 
uh, exceptions for some of the elements we'll discuss a little bit later, uh, which are doesn't have the, such like uh, ending parts. So we'll discuss a little bit later. So inside of the web Visual Studio Code, we we'll have different type of uh, extensions which was already installed. One of them is uh, snippets. Uh, snippets to improve, such like a snippets to write uh, to write your code and improve the development step. For instance, uh, you will not writing like this p and slash and p slash and p. If you write just p and press tab button, it will create for you just in that tag and you can write your code inside of the element. And such like uh, extensions can be installed inside of any uh, editor. And that, that's for just improving the development step. So Lorem, it's just an example for, example for fitting any element using just a random, random text inside of your web page. So here we have the paragraph tag and here we, ha we have the just the content of our paragraph tag. As you can see here, we have headers, we have paragraph tags, and if you refresh your source code, we have also the, these uh, changes of our code. So, as you can see, if we have some if we have some changes inside of our file, here we have the refresh button. So you can press this link, this icon, or you can press F5 if it's a, if it's a window, a Windows, or Command R if it's a Mac or a Linux. But it's also uncomfortable. That's why here we have extension called Live Server. Live Server, this, this extension, if you install it, after installing this extension, inside of your file you can click uh, just the right uh, mouse button and first option which is recommended for you is open with the live server it's a command or l or command o if you click this button and you can remove these or other things and you can see here uh, that we have already run our this file inside of the local web server. So the live server will run your code inside of the local server under the some port and your path to your file. And if you see here, let's just take it something like this. If you see here, for instance, h4, hello, keep it to you. And without any refreshing, you can see changes over here. So just uh, also comfortable extension to see uh, to see and speed uh, of the development step of your web pages. Okay, let's wait like this. Okay. Paragraphs, links, images, buttons, list, and tables. So, okay, the headings we already have, the paragraphs, uh, links. What is the links? It's just the uh, abbreviators to the other resources. It might be anything. It might be, let's create a uh, link. Let's copy the link to the GitHub and put here and right here, go to Google. And as you can see here, we have the link to this Google. And if you click here, from your web web page, you will uh, pass to the git, uh, so the Google website and so on. If it is necessary, you can open it in a in a separate tab. For that, you have to write target blank. If you open it and click to this button, so as you can see, this page also will be stayed in the web browser and this. Uh, link will be opened in the separate in the separate tab. For that, you can uh, write uh, just like a target and uh, blank attribute 
for the for this element. So here we have the names of the elements. So H1, H3, and H4. It's a P. It's a A. It's an abbreviator, and so on. As you can see here, we have other data here. What is this? So it's just the attributes of our elements. So ref H R H H R F. It's a, just a reference. A reference to some resource. It might be uh, other websites. It might be other web pages for this uh, for your program. And here I have the just the names of the attributes. So the targets so just the attribute and attribute value. Here we have the black for the H reference attribute. We have the value like HTTP and Google.com and so on. And all other. For instance, here we have all other uh, elements also might have different type of attributes. About the attributes, we'll discuss it with later. So links, images, buttons. So let's create some button. Button will be just like, for instance, login register. So like uh, button, it's just the name of the element, and you have to open and close it. And inside of the these uh, elements, what you wrote here will be inside of the button. If you have such like as, as uh, text here, the button content will be also like this. After clicking these elements, after clicking these uh, buttons, what you have to do, it, it might be a uh, task for the next lectures. And uh, what I have to do, for instance, uh, let's create. Uh, so when when we create when we but cl click a button register, it will just open the register page and so on. Uh, fill the form, and after the filling form, we can uh, authorize to the program to have the different type of. Uh, different type of resources. So about the tables. Table, it's just also one of the main important uh, elements. Inside of the table, so table will be opened and closed. It. We have two sections. We have hitting sections. Table hit. All other, uh, all of these elements will be just, it's a, just a short version of the explanation. For instance, it's a hitting one, it's a hitting three, it's a paragraph, it's an abbreviator, it's a button, table, it's a table height, and table body. So we have here table row. So let's let it be table row. Let it be, for instance, uh, number, uh, name, and grade. Here we have, uh, for instance, one. Student one and five. Uh, let's copy these rows. So as you can see here, what we are writing. So table, it's just a root of element of the table. We have two separate sections. It's a two uh, table hitting and table body. So inside of the table heading, we'll just uh, write our headings. So the ID, name, and grade, for instance. ID, name, and grade. TR means it's a table row. TH means it's a table heading elements. So as you can see here, they will be uh, on the uh, using the bold uh, font uh, style if it's a heading one. So TH, the table heading. Inside of the body, we also have the table rows. So it's the first 
So it's a first row, it's a second row, it's a third row, and so on. Table rows, and each row will have the different columns or different cells. So TD, it's a, just a first element. So the first cell will be, which will be the under the this uh, cell. That's why it's just a name. The second one is the name of the student. The third one is the grade of the student. And after completing the first row, you can uh, continue filling the other rows using different uh, data and so on. So, this is just uh, using of the table element inside of your web page. Except this, we have also image uh, attribute. As you can see here, all of other elements here, we, we have to open and close here. Open and at the end, we have to close here. But we have exception here. Inside of the image tag, you don't have to write like image here. So just incorrect and uh, wrong version because inside of the image, it's just enough to start writing your uh, start filling your attributes and that's it. For instance, uh, so let's copy any image. So the copy link uh, image address. So we have the image address here, and let's put it here. And as you can see here, we have the this image inside of our web page, but we have a big size because of the size of the image was the uh, original one without any modifications. That's why you can uh, you can set the your size for instance, so let it be 20 pixels, 200 pixels here at the width and height will be automatically uh, proportional decrease it with our width. That's why, so after putting a source, SRC, it stands for the source, source for your image. You will have the reference to your abbreviator and so on. So the source for your image, it's uh, under the, this link. So we have the PNG, RG, GPG, and all other extensions. And after that, the separately, I pass that the width should be 200 pixels. What does it mean, alt? It's a just a message, for instance, my image, my image, it's a just an ad. And as you can see here, we have uh, our image here. If I am just waiting with the, just, uh, with the exceptions to show, to inform the user, in our, in our case, it's just a user of our web page, should know what should be inside of this image. So that's why I am saying the uh, just a mini description, for instance, my image with full, for instance. If I will have some uh, exceptions, if I will have some uh, problems with the uh, with my source file, in our case, it's a source file, if I will have some exceptions here, the so alt attribute will be shown here to inform the user that inside of this image should be something which was uh, which was described using the alt parameter. If we have our source without any exception, in that case, alt parameter will be just keep it. So just the extra extra attribute to show if we have the some uh, problems with this source file. So, OK. HTML elements, uh, so the elements and attributes. So as we discussed here, here we have the source attribute here. So the width attribute, alt attribute here, and the above examples, we, we had the uh, reference attributes and so on. 
accept those attributes. We can also use the ID, class, style, data, and title, suggest the examples of that uh, attributes. What does it mean, ID and class? Inside of your in, inside of our web page, we don't have any style anymore because we just uh, we have the simple element without any styling and so on. For instance, so let's add style here. So I want to add style to the this text to this element. For instance, color, let it be red. And as you can see here, the red color. For instance, um, what else? So let it be here, style, color, zero, zero, F, F, one, one. Let it be like this. So we have different types of setting the colors. One of them is just uh, all the appropriate uh, the names, for instance, uh, red, uh, blue, uh, blue, violet, and so on, uh, all different uh, colors, which was uh, save it with the names, with the names inside of the HTML elements, inside of the CSS uh, values. So what we are doing now, we are uh, trying to add styles to our elements. It means CSS will become here to add your, some styles to our web page. For instance, here we have the different type of elements, different type of colors, and so on. For that, will be responsible uh, the cascading language. So cascading language is just a CSS. For instance, uh, let it be uh, if it's a white. We don't have any data here. That's why it, uh, background also white. Let it be just blue. <coughs> so the first option is just using the names. The second one is using the RGB values. RGB stands for red, green, blue. It's a two, three uh, values of that uh, colors. So it's a green, uh, red, green, blue. So let it be here. So style. RGB, for instance, for instance, it were all the values of these three uh, elements will be starting from zero until the 255. For instance, if it's a zero, so if it's a, uh, 255, 255, 255, all these three values, it's a red. First one, it's the first argument, it's a red. The second argument is a green. It's the third argument, it's a blue. If all of them will be the 255, it's uh, just a color white. If all of them is uh, equals to zero, it means without any uh, data, we'll have the black one. So black, it's uh, just uh, all zeros. If we have the 255 in all sections, we have the white color. For instance, how can I get the red color? As you can see here, the first, first attribute will be used for the red section. If I am putting the zeros for, for other sections and 255 to the first section, it will be the red color. If I'm putting the zero on the first section and on the second section, I will put the 255. As you can guess here, it will be the, just a green one because the second one is a G, it's a green. And the same thing for the blue. If you put here 255, you will have the blue one. And this name of the blue and this RGB, they are the same. So we have three types of the setting the colors. The first one is using RGB. Second one is using the names of the colors if you if it's uh, comfortable for you and if it's uh, uh, necessary. And the third one using the hash. Using the hash of the color. So all other colors, for instance, let it be some uh, 154. So here we have the 100 and like, uh, like this, here we have the 10. So let it be 100. So 100 here. All other colors will be using the, <coughs> using the, these three sections. 
these three sections and creating the different values for that colors using these uh, three section values. Again, here we have the all the all the sections should be uh, in the range of uh, zero and two hundred and fifty five. OK. OK, so let's add style to. To order the second uh, paragraph, for instance, font. Font size for the paragraph, let it be 15 pixel. I think it's already 15, yeah? Let it be 10 pixels. So, uh, OK, it would be just notable and you can see the changes. So the second paragraph, the font size was changed to the 10 pixels. For instance, we have different types of the font. For instance, font family to change the family for the uh, font with the font weight. For instance, if let it be bold. If it's a bold, just like uh, setting a bold for the over paragraph and so on. <coughs> uh, other sections for the font, uh, font variable for the different type of values. Um, font style, font size, font family, they are just uh, common common things for the uh, changing the fonts and so on. For instance, uh, let it be. So let's create our second file, which is a home page. So it's just a let it be form page, form HTML or register HTML. I'm creating a second file inside of our file inside of our folder, which is a register. Let it be here uh, HTML also. HTML let it be body and H1 here. Let's say register page. So here I have the second file of register page and inside of the H1. Uh, so inside of the uh, index file i want to add at the beginning of the file i want to add abbreviature so the login uh, so the register register page in, uh, or just register and as you remember for the reference we can pass some the source from the internet for instance link to the google Except this, we can also put here just the name of the our local files. In our case, it's a register. So just also reference to the some resource. Resource my, resources might be different. So resources might be HTTP, HTTP resources, or resources might be just a files, HTTP file, so HTML files. So as you can see here, we have the link to the register uh, register page. If you click this link. We can go to the next page, which is discussed already here. For instance, P, Lorem, and as you can see here, the range. So let's put here uh, again the link for the index, index HTML. Uh, let's uh, go back. Go back link. If you click this button, it will go back to the index file, index page. It's the first page. You click the to the register to the go to the next page and go back to the index file. So the re reference should be index, and what's inside of this abbreviate will be just a, just the a name of your link, name of your abbreviate. Okay. So let's go to the register file, and I want to show here some elements of the HTML elements which will which will be used for the forms. So let's create form. Form, it's just like uh, uh, using the inputs, different types of uh, inputs. So let it be input. So action, we can remove it. So the form uh, element will be used inside for the filling some forms inside of your uh, web pages, for instance, the inputs. Inputs might be different type. The type of the inputs, the basic one, it's just a text. Input text, it's just a, like a rectangle. 
where you can write some information and fill the form. So inside of the input, we have different types of attributes. One of them is placeholder. Placeholder, it's just a uh, hint for the users. For instance, enter your, your name. And as you can see here, here we have the hint, hint for the users that they have to fill the name of uh, they, their names. For instance, here, um, okay, remove it. Let's see the, uh, the the second part. Let's see the other parts of the registration. So, for instance, if, uh, except the text, we have here password. Password type, which means if you fill it, it will just uh, hide your characters because it's a password. Uh, we have also different types, for instance, or else we have input uh, password number. If it's a number, it's also just like uh, uh, just like a text, just like a text, but we have here these arrows which will be used for increasing and decreasing for the numbers. All of these attributes will be uh, we can we can find un under this link. For instance, you have the field uh, forms and so uh, so the input what is the input? So here we have the input until the under the input you can find different types. So the types for instance the radio and so on. All of other than attributes we can pass to this uh, uh, to this attribute to this element and so on. For instance, the number, of instance checkbox, checkbox. Checkbox, for instance, some with the some message, for instance, do you agree with someone? Do you agree to with this uh, inside of the inside of the paragraph, for instance, after uh, while we are creating um, let's create a field set. If it's a field set, what does it do? So just like uh, label, for instance, full name. Label for the password. Uh, for instance, your age or anything, your grade. It doesn't matter because uh, for now it, uh, it doesn't matter what is else. <clears throat> so the they're asking for some questions that uh, would be just uh, true or false. What is this? If I'm putting here checkpoint, it means I agree. Uh, I, I agree with the, all other stuff and so on. For asking the, uh, for getting the information, all of these uh, things, all of these inputs will be just used for getting the information from the uh, user. In our case, user is just a person who opens our web page, and this inputs helps us to get information, for instance, to get in the name here, the password here, for instance, grade here, and uh, getting the response for the some questions, uh, questions, and after that, after filling the all of the forms, and at the end you can put say, some such like a button, uh, so the register, for instance, so is this okay? Uh, so register. For instance, after the after the filling the all the field, all the things you can pass. Uh, so let's add one more 
Uh, let's add one more inputs. Like uh, you can add different have, uh, for instance, a range type, which is a, such like uh, uh, ranging inputs. If you have such like a uh, registration part with these inputs, it doesn't matter. For instance, we have um, date input. For instance, if it's a date, you can just uh, get a date from the user. For instance, date of birth, it doesn't matter. Date of birth or date of some registration parts and so on. So, using this type, uh, such like uh, inputs, such like uh, data types, you can uh, write your, uh, you can get uh, information from the um, from the users, and after that, after create, uh, after clicking to the register button, you can collect all the inputs which was uh, completed here and send it to the backend side, and backend side will just store that information inside of the database which means this user was registered to in, in, in our system, in our, uh, in our page, and after that, they, uh, they will just can log in and so on. For instance, here we have, let's create other field set, input, uh, radio button, uh, let it be option one. Option two and option three. And as you can see here, here we have the just the checkpoints. It's a multiple choice uh, questions, but as you can see, we can cho choose any of them. So all of them, which is uh, not correct. To fix this problem, you have to just add the name to your uh, radio element. For instance, mm, option, not option, it suggests uh, let it be, what is it? Mm, user option, let it be user option. And you have to put a name, uh, the same name for all of our radio elements radio elements, and after that, if you choose the first one, it will be selected. If you choose the second one, the first one will be removed. For that, you have to put the same names for your all radio elements, radio type input elements, and after that, they will be choose one of the one of these three options for, for getting the data from the user. Okay, about the elements, the about the style uh, classes and IDs, I will discuss a little bit later. For now, I want to show you the uh, show you the inputs and forms of the uh, elements HTTP. Uh, so HTML elements. So the comments inside of the HTML, you can write. You can use the comments like such like a syntaxes for starting from these opening brackets, uh, so opening uh, arrows. Uh, using these symbols, you have to put uh, two dashes here for opening and two dashes here for the closing. And after that, as you can see here, we don't have any radio, radio buttons here. It's just a line comment. It might be uh, one line, it might be several lines. This uh, data will be just skip it when the browser renders your web page. For instance, here we have also uh, this our comment, but uh, all the all your code under under the these symbols will be skipped when we are rendering something. For instance, here we have the from user, which is just will be skipped after that. Okay, it's just a comment. How can we comment inside inside of the HTML file? So here we have the HTML uh, forms. 
we already started uh, learning these forms because the, all the things we discuss here, the input text, the so type should be the just the text, it's so just input where we can write your uh, any information. The radio button we already also discussed here. The radio, the name should be the same for selecting one of them. So and after that, the checkpoint, which is also showed here, checkpoint, which is a agree or disagree. So just a true or false value. Uh, so the submit button is so just the last one. You can create, for instance, instead of the button, you can create the input with, with the submit element. Submit value would be register. And here we have the submit button. When we click the submit button, it will be just collect all the data and uh, do some HTTP request or to save to our local uh, database. Select option, we skip with the select option. Select option also will be with the name and with the ID also. Select it means that it be field set also. Select should be with the options. Option one, for instance, for the value. For instance, uh, let it be. Um, let it be cities. Almaty. Astana. And Shimkent. Values like uh, should be the different because these values would be send it to the server side when someone choose uh, the different values. For instance, zero here when we don't have any data. So let it be here. Label. Select your your city. This is just called the select options which is just options uh, from the list of the values. And if you select, for instance, Almaty and uh, click the register button, for the Almaty, it's just a displaying name, but the value should be uh, one. For instance, if you see here, uh, so the, this HTML, If you, for instance, select the Astana, the value should be inside of the select option. The value becomes as a two. If it's a Shimkent value, it becomes as a three. And on the server side, depending on these values, will be uh, chosen the appropriate uh, city and save it inside of the database. So the select options, the text area. So the next field is Field set, it's a text area. Uh, text area, it's just like uh, such like input. Here we have some little bit, so let it be just bio. You have to write a brief bio. Brief bio about yourself about your career or so and uh, it doesn't matter about you about some information. So the difference between the input, such like an input, and the text area. Text area might have the different new lines, new lines, while the just input text will be the only one line data, one line data from the user. So if you have such like a task, you can use the input text, text area also. Inside of the text area, we have the two extra attributes, which is which are calls and rows. Calls and rows, it's just a number of columns and number of rows. For instance, let it be rows equals to 30. And as you can see here, the range, so the height of our text area will be changed. So if it's a five, if it's a five, the, as you can see, the range will be also changed. So the same thing for the column. 
the number of elements, so the number of columns and number of rows. By default, it's just a 10, and here we have the 38, such like in the text. So the buttons, labels, I already showed here. So the labels, it's just uh, information for uh, each data, for each uh, input type. And uh, the buttons also used here, for instance, register or, for instance, cancel. For the register and cancel. So let's show it. Show here the the classes. Uh, okay, let's let it be a little bit later. Okay, about the elements of the HTML forms, uh, the, they are the many basics, and uh, they will be used for any data. And HTML for input types. Which uh, which are already discussed here: the text, password, and the radio checkbox button, reset button. It's just uh, also button which will just remove all the things here. For instance, mm, let's copy. Uh, Reset button, and if you click to the reset button here, for instance, after filling something, uh, you know that uh, you will have uh, you selected the wrong data, you chosen the wrong data, and reset button it, it will just remove the, all the filled data inside of your form. So as we covered all the inputs inside of the form tag, reset button will just uh, remove the, all the data which was entered by the user and becomes uh, it, it becomes as empty for any inputs. It's just a reset input data type. Here I have the reset and the value also reset. It's just a button like this. Radio checkpoints and buttons we already discussed. So here I have the HTML5 elements. So for that, let's create uh, so another file called uh, form form five. It will be form five. HTML for inside of the register uh, after the go back. So after the go back, I want to create the abbreviator for the form five. For form five HTML. Uh, HTML five forms. So that be just name of the abbreviator here. Okay, if you go to this file. Uh, to this file, I have to here write HTML code. It's a body. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, go back to register. Oh, sorry. Go back to register. It's just a name. And here I have the name of the file, which is the register HTML. Uh, so, um, okay, I want to register inside of the file. I want to go to the HTML file. So, if you inside of your HTML file, if you don't have any HTML and body text, this uh, live server will not work and it cannot uh, uh, so the refresh your web page. That's why you have to uh, before the running the live server, you have to write HTML and body text as a minimum. So that's why if you open this for this uh, link, as you can see here, we have form also. So inside of this page, I want to show the elements of the HTML file. Data types, which is a color, for instance, input. So the input uh, with the value of color. So color, as you can see here, it's a just option. If you click this to this input, it will just open the uh, pop-up where you can just select the needed color 
and after filling some form, you can uh, send this caller to the backend side to store that information inside of the server, inside of the database. So the date time I already I already saw the date. So just like this, uh, you can combine the date time, I think, uh, which is uh, date time local, yeah. Okay, date time local will be just uh, com uh, combining the uh, date and time. The, for instance, for Wednesday at uh, midnight, you know, you want to do something for that uh, inputs, you can use uh, such like uh, inputs. Uh, if it's uh, just time, I think it would be it would be just only time for the selecting the time and input for the different. For instance, email, it will just uh, check for the emailing that it uh, if there any uh, email signed inside of the values. For instance, months. So let it be months here. If it's a month, you can use a different month inside of the year. It uh, it might be any other, for instance, number. We already show the range also different search. The this tell value will be uh, if you open the uh, this web page using the mobile phone. The tell input says that it should be when someone selects this input. The keyboard of the mobile phone should be selected to the the numbers, not the keyboard with the uh, letters, but numbers to fill in the telephone. So the time URL weeks and uh, so let it be. So week here. To selecting the weeks appropriate for instance, and second, uh, seventh week and so on for the 20, uh, 2021 and so on. Such like uh, uh, inputs was uh, created and uh, marketed as HTML5. If it is um, necessary, you can use them inside of your web pages. So the, let's convert them to the field set. Okay. Okay. HTML form attributes. So about the attributes we already, so we don't have any. So the value, about the value, so go to the, so like you have the register page. So if you know, for instance, if you enter here some value attribute, for instance, value, it's so just uh, setting the value. If you enter by yourself, for instance, here, and click the button register, it will be sent to the server as a value. And we have here, we have here already set the values. For instance, for the select option, we have values such like values which which are already set. And uh, such like, uh, for instance, uh, where is the checkpoint? For instance, value is one. Value is true. And very is false. About the checkpoints, it would be just the true or false values when we click to this uh, checkpoint. For instance, putting this check, it might be one. Uh, this uh, selecting this check, it would be false. The same thing for the other data types. For instance, uh, here we have the value value equals to, for instance, one. If someone selects option one. To the server side will be sent at value one. It depends on the task and it depends on the uh, your value. For instance, what else? So the read only values. So read only means if you here set the attribute read only. Where is it? Your grade. It only means we don't have any access to write your or by yourself some value. For instance, let it be um, where is the reader? Okay, the value should be for instance ten. 
Okay, if you click to this input, we don't have access to write uh, like this inside of this input because it's just a read only. Read only means without any changes, you can just uh, put some input, but someone, the other users cannot change the value of that input. So disable sizes, for instance, disable true, which means uh, it would be just to disable and to without any uh, actions. So here we have some value, but here we have don't access, don't access to enter some information inside of the password, password input. So and uh, other uh, attributes, for instance, one of them is auto complete and for auto focus, for instance, if you put here after focus, after refreshing it, and after refreshing to this in this page, uh, without any mouse clicks, your input, so your cursor will be inside of the first input. It means it will automatically focus your input, focus your cursor inside of the first uh, first input, and you can write something and pass to the next one using the tab, and using the tab you can pass and select your needed options. So one of them is out of focus, which is also useful uh, when you uh, write your HTML forms. So the minimum maximum values might, might be used for the, uh, for instance, uh, for the range, for the range value, for instance, here we have the maximum, it's a 10, the minimum, it's a 1. So if someone selects uh, the values so like, like this, the maximum might be 10. The separation and the de deviation of this uh, range. It might be 101, it doesn't, but it depends on your task. So the re regular expression using the pattern, if it's necessary, you can uh, write such like uh, attribute, the placeholder, which is already discussed, for instance, required. So let it be required here and uh, disabled here. Which means if you click to the register button, password says fill with this uh, input because password was selected as a required one. Let it be required also the name. And after that, if you click to the button register without any fillings uh, before the password, it will show the first name. If you fill it and try to register again, it says the password also should be fill it because the password also was required from the creators. OK, so the HTML5 semantic HTMLs uh, inside of the inside of the our pages, we don't have any semantic attributes. For instance, uh, if you have, as we said before, we have sidebar here, we have header here and content or on the center of the web page. Like so, you can divide your web pages so we have, okay. Uh, like so, you can divide your web pages using the different sections. For instance, in here we have the three sections: the sidebar, header, and the center, which is a body. And such like uh, elements can be used inside of the. Let's go back to the home page. Uh, such like uh, sections can be divided using the div attribute. Div, for instance, uh, hello there. Uh, so let it be under the uh, so the register hello. So over here, let it be over here. This hello. So the div attribute, which is uh, just a container without any uh, any style. For instance, h1, it's a uh, element, HTML element with styling. Why? Because inside of the HTML1, sorry, sorry, h1, if I'm writing some value, it will just print out it like uh, with the some font size, with the some uh, the font family and so on. But the div is uh, just the empty container which can be just uh, covered with uh, some value. For instance, hello, it's just a pattern. For instance, here we have the paragraph. If you have paragraph, paragraph also has its own 
own values, so let it be. So here we have the. So here we have the styles for the paragraph. For instance, here we have the paragraph. And as you can see here, we have the margins and the uh, paddings from the uh, top side and from the bottom side. But div is just an empty container without any uh, styles except the block. Block is just the default one for any value. For instance, h1, we have here font size, we have here displays and margins and so on. For instance, h2 and so on. For all other uh, attributes, we have existing attributes we have the existing the uh, styles but diff it's just a empty box empty box for the uh, empty box for setting the needed value for instance let's show the creating the class so inside of the web page there might be different classes and classes may be duplicated. For instance, some value here, for instance, box one. Box one, let it be box one. The class of this div called box one, what uh, it gives to us? It gives that using the box class, within the box class, you can set some styles to your element, HTML element. Styles, as you can see here, might be inline. We have three types of styles. The first one, the first one is inline. The second one is in file. The third one is uh, external. So the first one is inline when we have the inside of the HTML attribute, so HTML element, we have styles uh, in the same line. The second one is in file. In file means inside of the current file. It means inside of the in index HTML file. We can create a tag called style. And inside of the style, we can add some styles to any needed element here. For instance, uh, let it be for H1. I want to set color. Uh, let it be like uh, type. And as you can see here, what what it says, what I'm uh, writing inside of the head, because head head tag will uh, import all needed all needed CSS and static files, which will be used inside of our body page. Inside of the body page, I, I'm saying that styles will be covered on inside of these two uh, opening and closing styles attributes style elements, and it says H1. I'm saying all H1 elements inside of the this web page should be colored like this. If I'm adding one more element here, H1, it will also will be the same color. Why? Because I'm putting such like a uh, name of the attributes. It's a name of the tag, which will be used for the uh, not to be second one, which will be used for the setting some color. So let's create some class. Class uh, my h h1 for instance. If I'm saying h1 dot my h1, it means directly to the uh, that h1 with this class. Classes should be used with with the dot element dot symbol. So if you remove this h1, it will be also the same thing. For instance, my class is the name of the class. I'm saying it doesn't matter which tag. If it's a class with the my class, it should be the, the such like a color. So let's put uh, let's put to the hello web also class my class one. As you can see here, the my class one immediately will be on the, on the with the same color, which was which was described inside of the style using the class. So if I'm putting such like a H1, it means inside of the H1, all the H1s with the uh, with the class, my class H1 will be called such like a, such like a style. 
like so you can we have different types of options if you are putting just name of the uh, name of the tag it means all the text with the same uh, tag name will be uh, styled with these styles for instance let it be color something like this uh, what else uh, font weight let it be bold if it's uh, so each one it's already bolded and it's why just uh, just put uh, our color here so h1 should be all h1s inside of the web page should be blue blue color so h1 with the which class uh, my h1 let it be color will be red so h1 with this class h1 with this class will be so sorry why this second one my second my class not colored with the red one because the second one uh, used for the tech name h2 so if it's the h2 and my h so the name should be a little bit different that's why let's remove this one and for the h2 i want to use id h2 id id1 let it be id1 so what does it mean class and id class is just the name of the class and classes might be used inside of the different uh, uh, different uh, values for instance if you put here h1 uh, for the uh, all the h1s with the color red as you can see here h1 color blue but under the this style if i'm putting such like in such like a syntaxes which means I'm overriding this uh, styles which was described before. So we before described that the H1 should be color blue, but here we are saying that H1 with this class should be colored as a red. That's why they they describe it as a red. If I am copying this style by putting the after that, it will be just skip it because we have here the name of the class for instance i'm putting here also class but putting the blue as you can see here as i'm setting here red but after that i'm overriding the style and the changing the value to the blue it becomes as a blue and that's it okay uh, the id so id of the elements of the id attributes uh, of the elements will will be used with the sharp sign the sharp sign inside of the uh, inside of the style elements. So we have here, for instance, um, if you open the inspect code, if you open the inspect code, here we have the for instance class called title. So the difference between the class and the ID, classes might be used, as you can see here, in different elements, the same class. For instance, my H1 can be used here, can be used here, and can be used in a, any other cases. But IDs should be the unique for the whole web page. It means for this file, for the index.html file, this ID should be used only one time. This is the key point for the using the IDs. For instance, ID sidebar, ID block, ID content can be used only one time inside of the whole page. Inside of the whole page, and uh, as you can see here, the when you are using the IDs, it it will be used using the sharp sign. So the sharp and the name of your ID and uh, adding your styles to that file. So let it be color uh, green. And that's it. So green, it's the name of the uh, ID of the name. So ID of the name here, and that's it. So let's work with the last one, it's the external one. 
which is a external uh, CSS files. In that case, let's create a site of our file. Uh, let's create a static folder. Inside of the static folder, let's create the CSS. Uh, inside of the static folder, it might be also other folders like it, JS. Uh, it might be one more class, for instance, images. All the static files which you which will use inside of your web page will be stored inside of these uh, folders using the appropriate colors. So style, the extension for the CSS files should be CSS. And as you can see here, uh, we created the file inside of the static folder under the folder CSS, and we somehow uh, import this file inside of uh, our web page. So let's copy this and go to the register and HTML form. So let's go to the to the HTML five, the form five. And we'll work on the we'll work. We'll work here. So inside of the head, as you can see here, inside of the head. So results. Okay. Inside of the head, uh, head we want to link to our style CSS file. To that static folder, which is located inside of the root, and under the static we have the CSS folder, and inside of the CSS we have the style CSS file. I'm importing this file inside of the web page, which is a form five, which is this page, this page, and here we have the class called box. I'm opening this file. Let's separate it. I'm opening this file and uh, trying to start writing styles for this class. For instance, background, let it be red. Uh, width, uh, width uh, 100 pixel, height also 100 pixel. And as you can see here, we have box without any data. Uh, so the box here without any data, which is a diff, suggested dividing the uh, empty thing so the using the class within the class i'm uh, setting some uh, styles styles for for that uh, box so let's see other things so we have here border uh, border style for instance for the since border color let it be blue uh, border uh, width, let it be two pixel. Uh, uh, border mm. for instance, border radius 20 pixels. As you can see here, border radius means all the corners will be uh, rounded for the set value. Uh, for the set value, and that's it. For the border border style, it is solid. As you can see here, border style uh, might be different values. For instance, if it's a solid, let it be five pixels to see the difference. For instance, uh, five pixels, the color of the border will be the blue, and the width, which is a five pixels, radius, it's a saw. Uh, so the style it's a salt. It might be dashed. For instance, if it's a dashed, it would be just like this. So let's create a different uh, so other boxes. Okay, yeah, it's enough for the today. So it might be dashed. It might be uh, what else? It might be dotted. For instance, dotted, which means with the dots. If you if you just uh, Fill the border. It might. Uh, it can be just a solid. And and other things. For instance, border. Mm. 
So you can separately change the radiuses of the different corners. For instance, bottom left corner. It means bottom left corner. It means this corner. Uh, let it be uh, 50 pixels or 30, 40 pixels, uh, except the others one. So as you can see here, all other radiuses, border radiuses will be the 20 pixels, but the bottom left radius, bottom left radius will be the 40 and uh, such like uh, changes. And all these things can be done using the only one value. So for instance, border uh, two pixel sol uh, solid uh, and green for instance. Not two pixels to show the difference, let it be also six pixel. And all other these three attributes, three styling sheet values can be changed with the one value when we have the border. And I'm saying the size of the border width and the border style, which is a solid, and the color of the border, which is a green. You can separately uh, put such like uh, values, but if it's necessary, you can use uh, using the border, uh, using the such like a sequence when we have the questions. Okay. We have two types of paddings and margins. For instance, we have, uh, uh, let's create here uh, some other div, which is a box inner. Box one, inside of the box one, we have the class called box inner. What the time? Okay, five minutes left. Okay, box, box inner. So such like a sequence you can write, for instance, box one, it's the first element. Inside of the box one, we have the second element, which is a box in. And so using this sequence, you can write and set the, uh, set the styles for the inner element inside of the uh, color. For instance, background. Uh, not background, let it be just for instance, like such like a color, uh, color let it be white, font, uh, font size let it be 90 pixel. Oh, sorry, it's a little. 14 pixel. Okay, so inside of the uh, box inner, we have the we have um, <laughs> we have that which is just a hello web, which is like it inside of the inner element, and I want to add inside of the main box box one. I want to add padding. What does it mean padding? We have different types of paddings and uh, uh, margins. So, for instance, padding, we have top. Let it be 20 pixel. And as you can see here, padding means it will be added the margin between the border top and inside the inner element. In our case, inner element, it's just this uh, text. This text will be, uh, so let's inspect this value. And as you can see here, inside of the box one, we have padding. We have padding from the top. So we have padding from those. So if you remove this padding, the hello web will be started on the starting from the left uh, top side. Left top side always, which is a zero zero. So here we have the zero zero. And if we go down, the value of the Y will be increased. If we go right, the value of the X will be increased. And like so, the, if we are adding the 20 pixels from the top, which is a padding, it will just add this padding from the top side. If I'm adding the padding from the left side, let it be 10 pixel. 
as you can see, 10 pixels will be added from the left side. There you can see also, you can add the uh, uh, paddings from the right and bottom side, but in our case, it doesn't matter because uh, the, our text uh, is not long to cover this well, which is the first one. The second thing, it's a margin. For instance, margin. Uh, margin top, for instance, 40 pixels. Margin top, it's just a padding from the outside element. If you go here, as you can see here, we have the paddings uh, after the our form. So it means box one will be margined to the 40 pixel down, respectively to the form, to the parent element, which is located on the uh, on the top side of this uh, value. The same thing you can you can add the margins from the all four sides for the left, from the right, from the bottom, and so on. So we have two types of the paddings. Okay. Uh, these paddings will be discussed inside of the inside of the uh, inside of the slides also. So HTML elements will be discussed here. Style guide for the HTML also will be under the, this link. So about these uh, sections we already discussed. So the header uh, HTML elements which was uh, used in the HTML4, for instance, inside of the div, they was added the header menu and uh, content as you can see from this from this section. If you see here, here we have the footer. Where is this section? So, so. Okay, the elements, for instance, the sidebar, uh, sidebar, the header, and the content in the previous versions of the HTML was used, uh, was, def uh, was uh, separated like uh, using the IDs for the header menu and so on. Using the HTML5, you can separate them by the uh, semantically understandable text like a header, like a nav section, and articles and footers and so on. So the cascading style sheet, we already started learning this style. So the inline external or internal and external, we already discussed it. So can you turn off? Please turn off your mobile, uh, so the microphones during the lectures. So three types of using the CSS. The first one, it's uh, inline, which is over here. The second one is in file uh, or internal. When we have the style element inside of the current file and uh, writing the styles inside of the you know, this tag. And the third one, it's external when we import the new file uh, from the static folder. The font, border, padding, margins, and with IDs and classes will be used inside of the CSS. And to don't repeat yourself, for instance, as we discussed here, a, we you have to create uh, to if we if you have the same styles for the different values, you can create some class and add the, this class to the needed attributes, needed elements inside of the HTML files to not repeat for, for yourself. So if you discuss the syntax of the CSS, it's a selector, it's just the name of the selector, in, in our case it's a body. And the declarations are definitions of our style, for instance, font, file, family, color, background, emergence, and so on. At the left side, it's a property, properties of the different style elements. And on the right side, you have to write your values, depending on your request. So CSS selectors, for instance, using the tag name, as we discussed, using the name of the tag H1, will be uh, covered to these elements. Class name, for instance, using the dot, dot large, which means if you add the class P large value as a class, and you can write selector like this. Tag name and class, as we already discussed here, tag name and class will be like this. And using the ID, ID with a sharp sign. 
So pseudo selectors, you have to read about it uh, at your home and you, during the uh, sections and uh, different type of elements can be different type of pseudo selectors can be used using these syntaxes. For instance, hover means when mouse hovers over the paragraph element, the color will be changed to different values. So about the colors we already discussed. So we have here RGB, so RGB and so on. The predefined names, which you can also use. And here we have the boxes. So the margin, which is a uh, space between the different elements. Border, it's just the size of the border. And inside of the border and inside of the inner element, we have the paddings. So padding might be also from the four sides, from the all sides. And as the element itself, element itself will have the width, will have the width and height. And total element width will be added uh, uh, if you go from the left to, to the right side. The width uh, of the element itself, left padding, right padding, left border width, right border width, left margin and right margin. So as uh, we can see, so the margins and the borders, they are transparent. So without any background color or without any um, other styles, they are just transparent. So the values for the CSS uh, attributes, so the pixels, millimeters, centimeters, it depends on your task. You can use any of these, uh, any of these units. So the size property, so as we discussed here, we, we can use a one line code for the border, for instance, five pixel, it's a width, solid, it's a style, and red, it's a, just a color. Uh, so for the margins and uh, paddings, we have the four types of paddings, and you can also combine them with the one name, for instance, uh, padding. And OK, regarding to the positions, regarding to the relative, fix it and absolute. For instance, you can use uh, different type of elements, different type of. Um, you can use, for instance, let's create here. So HTML5, let's create here button. Go up. Let it be go up. And I want to add style. So where is the style? Style to this button. So let it be um, button with the class um, go up. Let it be go up. Uh, inside of the style file, I want to, using the class go up, I want to put this position. Position as a fix it. Uh, let it be absolute. Uh, from the right side, I want to put uh, something like uh, 20 pixels. From the bottom side, I want to put uh, also 20 pixels. And that's it. And as you can see here, the button goes uh, to this side, and this is just uh, absolute value. Uh, so let's add some content to our web page. Or um, let it be multiplied by 10. And as you can see here, this button located. So let's add some color to the button. So the background color, uh, which is a red. So here we have the our button. Uh, font size 20 pixel. So here we have the button, which is the position should be, uh, which is the position is absolute. Absolute means it doesn't matter where is the, uh, your web page, so where is it scrolling. So this button will be located on the set position. From the right side, 10 pixels. From the bottom side, it's a 20 pixel. If it's a fix it, if it's a fix it, if you go to the right side or to the scrolling to the web page, it will be located on the set it set set uh, position. You can use it to, to this button to the, well, for instance, for the top bars, for instance, if you scroll down, top bar should be fixed on the web page. In that case, you can use a position called fix it. 
and it uh, depends on your task. You can use the right button, bottom, top and left, depending on your task. So here we have the different type of positions. So the position fixed and absolute and relative static, they are the just the options one. So as we will discuss here, the zero zero, it's a top left corner. So top, top left corner of the web page here will be the zero zero and depending on this, this value, you can use different uh, positions. So the element visibility will have the display. By default, all the elements will be display block, which is a short. You can just set uh, visibility to, to hide them to display none. And that's it for today. Uh, so we finish it today's Hi. lecture and your lab work for the second lab work will be added today and about the deadlines of the lab work we'll also discuss. So today's examples will be also uh, in push it to the GitHub well a good GitHub repository and link will be added to the Mm, link to the to the teams, teams group teams group here we have the team group okay so why we study terms that we already did on lab work so the lab work will just example to uh, inform to inform your uh, to prepare yourself to the lecture time uh, uh, during the lecture we'll discuss and if you have questions from the lab work and from the other things we'll discuss on the during the lecture time so the lectures will be just uh, uh, using the new form called the flipped classroom which is your homework and use the, uh, during the lecture time we'll learn more and we'll try to solve different problems deadline for the lab work also until the wednesday or today so lab work is just an exceptional one so the lab work for the today's practice lesson will be today but uh, if you have problems with the lab lab number one uh, <clears throat> next week on uh, next pr pr practice lesson uh, you have to pass your lab number one and lab number two so if you have practice lesson on Saturday, you have to defend it on Saturday, but you have to upload your lab work until the Wednesday to the GitHub. OK, uh, I beg if you have plans and if you don't have any other time, you can go and we don't have any attendance points and that's why. You can leave without any messages for the next time. I beg if you hear for the next time, you can just leave the meeting without any messages and without any announcements. So the deadline for the lab number two will be. So will be yes on Tuesday uh, midnight. So on Wednesday we have the first practice lesson. That's why the next uh, Lab work defense will be uh, so that you have to upload it until the 9th February. So the, until the 10th February. <coughs> so any other questions? А у меня вот практика сегодня у вас. И кто-то говорит, что нужно загружать по лапке все коды на GitHub. Ну вроде вы не говорили. А для первой лабораторки сделаем исключение. Если есть необходимость, тогда можете, в принципе, некоторые из них, не все туториалы, то есть не все пункты, да, каждый пункт, да, можно вот последние, там есть проекты, последние проекты загрузить в GitHub, чтобы мы знали, когда вы закончили свою работу. Извините, можно спросить? Да. Вот есть ли какой-нибудь список, чтобы узнать, кто у меня преподаватель по практике? Просто там всем оказывается. Во время практики вам скинут список. Преподаватели скинут. Хорошо. Where to send the GitHub link? GitHub link to, should be sent to your teacher on the, during the practice lesson. Uh, 
А, а такой... Да, 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 а, да. Можете, пожалуйста, в команду добавить? Просто я по коду не могу зайти. <coughs> а, как, я просто как на прошлый... В смысле, кого добавить? Вас добавить? Да, в команду добавить. Я по приглашению сижу сейчас. Так, а вы отправили за этот запрос? А, я вот код пишу, а он говорит э, такой команды. Смотрите. Вот pending request я не вижу. Если вы отправили запрос, то я добавлю. Ну, то есть добавил все. Uh -huh. Хорошо, сейчас да, поищу. Да, попросите других, как они зашли. Так, еще вопрос. Так, если вопросов нет, тогда в принципе можем остановить рекорд.